So today, um, I want to just share some, uh, one of the most important chapters we'll cover will be chapter 63. And so I want to just share a couple of images that will help us understand chapter 63 and set up a discussion that I'd like to have um, in class about that chapter. Um, so 63 is one that we refer to a lot. It's from this one that we get the, the phrase, uh, try, try, uh, treading the wine press alone. Um, here you can see an ancient wine press. This is a simple one where they just had one place to put the grapes and they would uh, tread on them and it would go down into this basin, right? Um, here is one from the 1800s, nine carom, and you can see here it is. There was another one here, but they were using an ancient one still then. Nine carom is a, a suburb of Jerusalem, beautiful little area, but anyway, where they tread it and then it comes out into this area and then down into this area. Um, the obviously need to clean it up a little bit, but so there it would seem right now just using this part. Here's um, the one that they have at the Jerusalem Center today built off of uh, some that they've seen uh, found from the time period of the Savior. And you can see they're serious. So you tread here, it drains into here, you tread more here, and it drains into these ones, and that's where you collect the, the wine. Um, now, uh, I always wanted to kind of know what this was like and, and experience this process a little bit. So we one time were able to harvest a bunch of grapes that someone wasn't going to harvest themselves. And we uh, washed our feet and everything, but then we put it in the swimming pool and we started uh, treading this. And you can see, you actually have to hold on to everyone. It gets quite slick. I'm sure it's less slick when it's not plastic, but still, it gets quite slick. Um, and uh, you, you hold on to each other. And as one person stomps, they squish out to the other persons and so on. But because they're uh, a lot of people, you can kind of get all the grapes rather than letting the grapes get away. So it's much more difficult to tread the wine press alone, obviously. Um, so you, you tread them and tread them, and then uh, you can see kind of the, the imagery there, what happens as you tread them. You have to do it in bare feet because you don't want to break the seeds. If you break the seeds, which your soles of feet will do, then um, it... Uh, it, it introduces a bitter taste into the, the grape juice or the wine. Um, so you just keep treading and then you have to filter it. So you can see we use this cheesecloth and we'd pour from here into there. Um, that's how you get the, the grape juice or the wine. And of course it stains, as you can see, uh, so it would stain the garments of anyone who is doing this um, quite a bit. Uh, you can see the kind of staining that happens from this and it does not come out easily. Let's just point out a couple of other things. He says he's coming from Basra. Basra is the capital of Edom, which is the country to the east of them. Um, Edom often symbolizes the world, so that's worth noting, but Edom itself means red. So there's a play on words that's going on here. Um, and, and Basra, uh, we think it means great processing and it's known just for that, the, the city was, known as a place where lots of vineyards and then they'd have wine presses and they'd process this. So it's really well known for that. So there are a number of reasons why he talks about coming from Basra and from the East um, in this uh, number of symbolic reasons, but some of them you may have already known. These hopefully add to it just a little bit. Um, now, I want you to focus on this. What are the questions? Tell us about who is coming. You've got this kind of question answer format at the beginning of chapter 63. We'll go through that in class. Um, one of the last things I want to point out is that in, in this intercessory prayer that is at the end of 16 through uh, 64, you get uh, a chiasmus. So the, there's a petition for the Lord to remember Israel. There's a statement on the consequences of Israel's sin. And there's hope that the Lord will make his power known to Israel. And then we get back to the statement on Israel's sinfulness and the petition for the Lord to forget his anger against Israel. So that's kind of a fun thing for you to look for as you do the reading also. So that's it. Uh, hopefully we'll have a great discussion in class. See you there.